Bichette disease or Bichette syndrome. It is the chronic relapsing inflammatory disorder of unknown etiology. So it is chronic chronic inflammatory chronic inflammatory as well as relapsing in nature inflammatory relapsing chronic inflammatory relapsing vasculitis of unknown origin so the etiology is unknown etiology of the bishops is idiopathic mcq question etiology of the bishops disease or the syndrome is idiopathic so it is a multi-system disease mainly characterized by so what are the important characteristic features characteristic features of Bichette's disease so it is the multi-system disease characterized by oropharyngeal manifestations in the form of recurrent oral aptus ulcers so the first important manifestation is recurrent oral aptus ulcers recurrent oral aptus ulcers or the oropharyngeal manifestations of the patients and after this the second important clinical manifestation or an important characteristic feature will be the genital ulcer genital ulcers after the genital ulcer the next one is the ocular involvement in the form of uveitis in the form of uveitis and majority of the patients may present with pan uveitis and some patients may also present with anterior or the posterior uveitis so here there may be a vascular involvement articular involvement involvement of the gastrointestinal system neurologic urogenital pulmonary as well as cardiac findings so because of all these manifestations can be seen that is the reason we call it as the multi-system disease and when we talk about the most important clinical manifestations of the Bichette syndrome it is especially due to vasculitis so vasculitis is the one which is responsible for important clinical manifestations of the Bichette's so what are the special features of this disease among the systemic vasculitis among the disorders of uh, the systemic vasculitis Bichette syndrome is remarkable for its ability to involve the blood vessels of all the sizes because if you see the vasculitis systemic vasculitis of other diseases they may involve small blood vessels medium sized or larger blood vessels but Bichette's is associated with the inflammation that is vasculitis of the blood vessels uh, that is of all the sizes that is small medium as well as large on both the arterial as well as the venous sites of the circulation so another important feature you need to know over here is blood vessels of all sizes are affected mcq question blood vessels of all sizes are affected and not only just arterial side both arterial and venous side arterial as well as venous side of blood vessels are affected in this so blood vessels of all the sizes are the important characteristic features of the Bichette's vasculitis now let us discuss little bit more detail about uh, the oropharyngeal manifestations in the form of oral aptus ulcers or oral ulcerations majority of the patients but not all patients initially manifest recurrent oral aptus ulcerations which are known as the canker source you can see the image of the oropharyngeal manifestation in the Bichette's disease or the syndrome which is grossly as well as 
histologically similar to that of the common oral ulcers and uh, recurrent aphthous stomatitis, but which tend to be more extensive, often multiple and more severe and more painful when compared to that of the normal oral ulcers. That is the reason whenever you identify the B-sheets, you have to see the severity of these ulcers. So not only that, in most severe cases, these ulcers may also limit eating. And if you see the morphology of these ulcers very carefully, these ulcers are rounded and range in size from few millimeters to two centimeters. Not only that, they have a very clear cut, well defined borders and have a white, yellow necrotic base and may have surrounding erythema. But minor ulcers are defined as those less than 1 cm in diameter are called as minor ulcers. And the major ulcers are the one which are defined as those ulcers which are at least 1 cm in diameter. And these major ulcers which are greater than 1 cm in diameter may form scar. And the outer portions of the lips are not involved, only mucous membranes are involved that is of the oral cavity. This is about uh, the oral aphthous ulcers that is the oropharyngeal manifestations in the bishops. Next one is genital ulcers or we can say urogenital lesions or urogenital manifestations. So genital ulceration is considered to be the most specific lesion for the Bichet syndrome as we can see that these can be seen in approximately 75% of the cases of Bichet's. Right, 75% of the cases of Bichet syndrome may have genital ulcers. So the ulcers are very much similar in appearance to that of the oral apte and are usually painful, same like oral aphthous ulcers. And these genital ulcers are most commonly found in the scrotum in the men as well as vulva in women. Recurrence is typically less frequent when compared to, with the oral ulceration. And the scar formation is also frequent in genital lesions if they are greater than 1 centimeter in diameter. And the scrotal scarring secondary to the ulcers is rarely if ever seen in conditions other than Bichet syndrome. So after the genital ulcers, next one is called as uveitis, ocular disease. Ocular disease occurs in approximately 25 to 75 percent of the patients of Bichet's. So 25 to 75 percent of the Bichet's may present with uveitis. It depends upon the race of an individual as it is more commonly seen in whites when compared to that of blacks. So majority of these cases who present with the uveitis that is ocular lesions progresses to blindness if not treated. An ocular disease typically less severe in North American populations resulting in lower incidence of vision loss but elsewhere the vision loss is more common who present with ocular manifestations in the bishops. When we specifically study the male patients of the bishops, these patients are more likely to get eye disease with approximately about uh, 75 to 80 percent developing the uveitis and also they have worse visual outcomes even with the treatment. And this particular uveitis is often the dominant feature of the Bichet syndrome and it is typically bilateral and episodic as well as involves the entire uveal tract. That is the reason I said that pan uveitis is seen in majority of the individuals and may not resolve completely between episodes. If there is an anterior uveitis or we can say isolated anterior uveitis is rare but may be seen in approximately 20% of the cases. And what is the hypopion in the uveitis? Hypopion. So hypopion is a severe anterior uveitis 
with a purulent material in the anterior chamber that is characteristically seen in about 20% of the patients with Bichet syndrome. So, hypopion may be seen in 20% of Bichet's. So, that is important MCQ question. 20% of Bichet's may present with hypopion. It is more commonly seen in anterior uveitis anterior uveitis in severe cases they may present as hypopion which is approximately in 20 percent of the cases and when we talk about the posterior uveitis over here the posterior uveitis retinal vasculitis vascular occlusion as well as optic neuritis all this requires a systemic immunosuppressive treatment and may irreversibly impair vision and progresses to blindness if left untreated Posterior uveitis cannot be assessed uh, reliably without the use of slit lamp. And the parenchymal central nervous system disease is more common in patients with optic neuritis. Even though the pathogenesis is not completely understood about these three important mechanisms, but it is thought to be an inflammatory reaction triggered by an infectious agent such as herpes simplex 1 or maybe because of uh, streptococcus in genetically predisposed individuals. Circulating immune complexes as well as neutrophils are also considered to be a part of the pathogenesis of Bichette's leading to the vascular injury. Here we need to discuss about uh, T helper 17 cells role in the development of Bichette's. Remember that helper T cells, T helper 17 we will call like this so or in simple language we can say that uh, th17 cells th17 helper t cells even helper t cells th17 cells are important in pathogenesis of the b shirts by contributing to the recruitment of the neutrophil as well as infiltrating the vessel wall so, here the Bichette's disease is relatively, even though it is completely rare, uncommon, but it is most prevalent in Japan as well as in the Middle Eastern and Mediterranean countries. In these populations, it affects men more often than women. And the onset of symptoms typically occur during approximately third to fourth decades of life. So, Another important MCQ question, men are like more susceptible to the Bichette's approximately the age is third to fourth decades. Men are more commonly affected approximately between third to fourth decades. Rarely it can also present uh, during childhood. And usually in children with a positive family history of the syndrome, then only you can see the Bichette's in children, if there is a positive family history. Another important question is, Bichette's is strongly associated with HLA-B5 as well as HLA-B51, MCQ question. Strongly associated with HLA-B5 as well as hla B51 MCQ question. Strongly associated with HLA B5 as well as HLA B51, but HLA B51 is present in more than 80 percent of the Asian patients with B shirt. So, the most specific one is B51 when compared to that of B5. And another important one is human alpha enolase. This is an important MCQ question too. Let me write all the MCQ questions uh, in boxes. Human alpha enolase. MCQ. What is this? Human alpha enolase, which is produced from the endothelial cells, are the one which target antigen of anti-endothelial cell antibody in the Bichert's disease responsible for the development of vasculitis. So, human alpha enolase which is produced from endothelial cell what you can see over here is another important pathogenic mechanism of Bichert's. 
when we talk about a clinical findings over here clinically the Bichette's disease is characterized by recurrent oropharyngeal as well as genital ulcers as well as ocular involvement so these three are very very important for us to understand recurrent oral aptus ulcers genital ulcers uveitis more commonly pan uveitis but out of all these three which clinical manifestation or what is the characteristic finding or initial presenting sign they will ask in the exam oral ulcers are considered to be the initial presenting feature of b sheds in approximately 80 percent of the cases mcq question the initial presenting sign of the b sheds is oral aptus ulcers we already said that these ulcers if they are greater than 1 centimeter in diameter considered to be the major one and they may tend to scar more oftenly. Dysphagia may also be seen because of like severe pain or dinophagia may also be seen in approximately 30 to 40 percent of the patients. And when we talk about the genital ulcers present similarly to that of oropharyngeal lesions but they tend to recur less frequently when compared to that of oral aptus ulcer. So, this is what we need to know about the Bichette's disease or the Bichette syndrome.